let the church say amen. Say amen again. We thank God for Fred singing that song. Sometimes you can't put into words what you're going through. Sometimes you can't articulate how you feel. But every once in a while, even though we've made our mistakes, even though we fell down here, we ought to be able to look up at God and say, Lord, I still thank you for my life. I know somebody is going to judge me and think that it's not all that, but they just don't know what I've been through. I just thank you for where I am right now. I know some folks think that I ought to be further along, but Lord, I just thank you that I'm not where I used to be. I thank you that while I was lost, you came and found me. And Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank you for my life. Ain't got everything I want, but I thank you. Ain't got everything I envisioned, but I thank you. Went some places I didn't want to go, but I thank you. Had some situations I got out of hand, but I thank you. For it's everything that I've been through that makes me who I am right now. And is there anybody that'll testify it's who I am right now that God wants to use in the future? If you would, it's preaching time. I'm going, I'm, going, I'm going to try to contain myself for a little bit. But I thank God that when I look back over my life, over all the things I've been through, I can tell them, Lord, thank you. I don't know about y'all, but there have been some moments I almost lost my mind. But won't God be a promise? And he'll keep your mind in perfect peace. Is there anybody that'll test me? There's been some times that I wanted to throw in the towel. But God held me close and wouldn't let go. And there have been some times I wanted to lay down and die. But in my darkest hour, this is what I found out. God is the light and the lamp unto my path. <laughs> he ain't always been good but I can tell you he's always been good thank you Lord Genesis chapter 32 Genesis, Genesis, Genesis chapter 32 just a couple of verses verse 24 through 26 Genesis chapter uh, 32 verse 24 through 32 then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said to him, let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. If you don't mind, this thought, uh, this theme for this sermon is, this time I'm working for it. This time I'm working for it. You may be seated in the presence of God. I want to give us a quick synopsis of Jacob. I want us to understand the context for verses 24 through 26. I don't want you to walk out of here thinking that Jacob got to this place of wrestling with the angel and saying, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me overnight. I want you to understand that it is both a process, a transformation, a situation in which all of us have to understand that you don't get from sinner to saint just like that. Uh, it's not that your name don't change, but it takes some time for your behavior to match up with your name. Hmm. 
Is there anybody in here that understand that just because you come and say, Lord, come into my life, don't mean the demons of your life go all walk away. In fact, some of us need to understand we've been so churchy that we've not been biblical and we got folks thinking I can come down here and give my life to God and everything is going to be over and everything going to be howdy howdy. But is there anybody that will wave back at me and say, but the devil is a liar. There is a process that God will take us through. And so let me let me let me unpack this. Let me let me unpack this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Jacob is a brother, is a brother, is a brother, is a brother that his first time he is blessed, he cheated. Uh, Jacob is chilling at the house one day making some beef stew. Uh, the Bible calls it red stew, but he's making some stew. And Esau, his brother, his brother, his twin brother, is out hunting, and 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 he's starving when he gets back to town. And he comes up to jo to Jacob's house, and Jacob got that stew on the on the stove, smelling good. And Esau says, man, give me a bowl of that stew. And Jacob says to him, I'll give it to you. I'll trade it. Give me your birthright, and I'll give you a bowl of this stew. And Esau now is starving. He says, what good is a birthright if I'm dead? So he sells, he trades his birthright for some stew and some cornbread. Now, how many of y'all then sold a whole lot more valuable thing for some less? Hello, somebody. He, he cheated to get blessed his first time. And don't you judge, Jacob. Some of y'all done cheated to be blessed, too. Uh, y'all know how it is when you at the office and you got some of those office uh, supplies that you need at your house and you kind of... Some of y'all got some staplers that you know you ain't bought. Some of y'all got some paper clips you know you ain't bought. Some of y'all got some rubber bands you know you ain't bought. You cheated your first time. You cheated the blessing. Second time, Jacob doesn't cheat. Jacob lies. His father Isaac is now old and nearly blind, and he wants to give the blessing to his oldest child. And Isaac has a conversation with Esau, and Jacob and, I, and, and Esau's mother, overhears the conversation uh the daddy says man go and and and, and go hunting and, and and make me a meal and when i get finished eating i'm gonna bless you the mom will come in and, and her favorite was jacob she says to jacob listen 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 your daddy is gonna give the blessing away tonight so here's what we're gonna do i know you're not as good of a cook as i am so i'm gonna cook the meal this time what I want you to do is just sneak up in there and get the blessing. Just, just lie your way into the blessing. And he looks at his mother and says, listen, my twin brother got hairy arms. I got smooth arms. Daddy is never going to be fooled with that. And she says, listen, let me conspire with you. Let me help you out. Anytime you are a liar, your sin will rub off on other folks. You don't want to talk to me? Let me help you out. Not only is Jacob a trickster, Jacob's mama's a trickster, and you're going to find out other folks around Jacob are just like Jacob. You got to be careful when you hang around liars. It's a true indication you a liar too. Oh, uh, you don't want to talk to me? Let me help you out. If everybody around you is, 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 is a gossip, guess what? You gossip too. And so here he is. He gets some... He gets some skin of an animal, puts a goat skin and puts it on his arm, takes mama's meal and goes in there and, and, and serves daddy. Daddy says, man, Esau, is that you? And Jacob lies. Gets the blessing. First time he cheated to get blessed. Second time he lied to get blessed. Don't you judge. Don't you judge, Jacob. Some of y'all lied to get your blessing too. It is tax season. Some of y'all got five kids. You ain't know you ain't spent not one day with, yet you claim on your income tax. Preach up in here, Davis. Lying to get blessed. Some of y'all got food stamp cards. No, you ain't got no food stamps. Y'all won't talk to me no more, hon. Amen and shut up on that one. Reverend, that ain't lying. That's called economics. The devil is a lie. That's lying. 
if it ain't yours and you put, <laughs> putting it off as it's yours, you... And so the second time, he lies to be blessed. And then the third time, the third time, the third, third blessing he gets, listen, is not him, it's what's done to him. The third time, he's tricked to get blessed. Y'all, 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 y'all do remember, he's running from his brother Esau, and he runs into his uncle Laban, and he runs to Laban's house. And before he gets to Laban's house, he's chilling at the well, and this fine sister come up there, and he look at her, and he know who she is. He like, I ain't seen her in years, but she sure look good now. Sister's name is Rachel, and he looks at her, and he knows, boy, that's Uncle Laban's daughter. Oh, it's about to be on and popping. Goes to Laban, tells Laban, Laban, listen, I want Rachel. Laban says, let's work a deal out. He says, listen, man, I'll work for you for seven years for Rachel. He says, all right, the problem is Laban got two daughters. One of them, the Bible describes, she just has nice eyes. That's cold for she was ugly. Let me help you out. If anybody tell you you got nice eyes and that's the only thing they compliment, that's cold that you. Uh-oh, some of y'all going to get mad and go call somebody right now and say, you dirty dog. But, but that's the truth. Here you go. The Bible said Leah had nice eyes. But Rachel was beautiful. It's in the text. It's in the text. It's in the text. Here you go. Here you go. Jacob has worked for seven years, and now he goes to Uncle Laban. He says, man, give me my wife. And listen to what he does. Laban calls and throws a party. And let me help you out in content and context. He throws a party and gets Jacob drunk. Davis, the Bible didn't say he got him drunk. Why do you say he got him drunk? Let me help you out. Because the Bible says that night Laban comes in not with Rachel, but with Leah and presents her to the wedding bed. And the word says when Jacob woke up the next morning, he had already slept with her, but he opened his eyes and saw not Rachel, but Leah. Don't you judge, Jacob. Some of y'all didn't woke up next to somebody you didn't plan on going to bed with either. You better be careful judging folk. You better be careful judging folk because all of us in here, that if the light bulb went on in our darkest hour, everybody up in here would walk out with your head down saying, oh, please don't judge me. Uh, is there anybody that know that you know that you didn't have some foolish nights, uh, but by the grace of God, And now he's mad. Now he's mad. He goes back to Uncle Laban. He says, man, what's up with this? I worked for seven years for Rachel, and you didn't gave me Leah. Laban said, oh, I forgot to tell you. The custom here is that the older daughter gets married first. Uh, be careful looking at the fine print of a contract because <laughs> the details is in the fine print of the contract. Here it is now. A brother that then cheated, a brother that then lied, then got tricked. So he says, I'll work seven more years for Rachel. He worked seven more years for the blessing that he wanted. He got tricked the third time for the blessing that he wanted. The first time he cheated, the second time he lied, the third time he got tricked for his blessing. Now here he is now, two wives, two concubines, and some kids now coming back home, and now he hears that Esau ain't forgot about what happened when they were younger, and he sends everybody away. He sits there, and the word says, there an angel shows up and wrestles with him. This is where I want to hang my text right here. I gave you all the background for this one point right here. If you want to, you can call it a one-point sermon. All that is for this one point. Even though he lied, uh, cheated, even though he lied, even though he got tricked, here you go. God says this last time, you got to work for it. 
Oh, I wish I had somebody to understand. Some of us are in the same situation as Jacob. We didn't cheated. We didn't lied. We didn't got tricked. We didn't been through this. We didn't been through that. And now we're at a point where God said, are you ready to serve me? Are you ready to be real? Are you ready to be used? And if so, you got to understand this time you can't cheat the blessing. You can't lie to the blessing. I'm not going to trick you into the blessing. This time you got to work. You got to put your hands to the plow and you got to work. So the word says they wrestled. They wrestled all night long. They wrestled. Physical contact. Wrestling. Before you judge Jacob, let me help you out. God will wrestle with you to get you to a place that he breaks your will. That's why Big Mama say, not my will, but thy will be done. Big Mama got that from Jesus in, in the garden, but Big Mama also understood this, that as long as she was going to do it her way, she was going to keep coming up short. But the moment she started doing it God's way, God made up the difference. Is there anybody in here that realized God is so smooth that when you put him first, he will order your steps, he will guide your path, and you will get to where he wants you to be. And the good news is, it's not how qualified I am, it's how great my God is. So God, God, God wrestles with him. This angel wrestles with him. This angel wrestles with him. For those of you out there who are wondering why can't I get delivered on Monday when I prayed on Sunday, God told me to tell you he wants to wrestle with you a little bit longer. Because <laughs> if he does it right now, you're going to lose your mind. He wants to wrestle with you a little bit longer. Some of you say, why can't I have all the things that I want right now? God said, let me wrestle with you a little bit further. Why? You didn't get bad overnight, but let me tell you this. I'll change your name at the moment of a twinkling of an eye, but to change your character, I want to walk you out of what you walked yourself into is there anybody that'll testify God will grab your hand and walk you out of the mess that you walked yourself into so that you can see he says he says he's gonna wrestle with Jacob he says Jacob man listen 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 this this time this blessing boy when you get when you get this blessing when you get this blessing boy it's gonna be different than anything you've ever had before when you when you get it this time it's going to be different than the last time when you get it this time when i deliver you this time when i bring you out this time when i take you to this place that i'm taking you this time when i give you this revelation this time when i give you this relationship this time it's going to be like unlike any other you've ever had before and so god said let me get you to a place that you are receptive to what i'm about to do in this season in this season, you see, the problem with some of us is that we always want God in our season. God says, get me in my season, and you will find out my season doesn't run out. So he, he wrestles. He wrestles. Sun's about to come out. Angel says, let me go. Jacob says this profound thing. I love this. I will not let you go until you bless me. What's your, what's your name, man? I'm a cheater. I'm a liar. And I've been tricked. That's my resume. I am who everybody says I am. I can't be trusted. I can't be depended upon. I walk out on all of my commitments. It's just a matter of time. If you leave $5 on the counter, it'll be in my pocket, even though I know it ain't mine. I am the biggest thief, the biggest liar you ever met. I put on one facade, but I'm really another person behind closed door. I smile, but I really got a crack problem. I smile, but I really smoke a whole lot of dope. I smile, but I really drink a whole lot. I smile, but I really got five women and two of them on the side. I smile, but I got all these issues. And the, the angel said, here you go. I know who you think you are. Let me tell you who God says you are. Oh, I wish I had somebody that understands God is ready to change your identity, but you got to be real on who you've been. 
You keep coming up in here trying to shake and fake it. Hey, man, you keep coming up here thinking you got it all together. Hey, man, you got your suit and tie. You got your, your tie done just right. You got your wig on just right. You got your hair done just right. You keep faking for all these folks. Let me help you out. God still knows who you are. Behind your cologne, behind your perfume, God still knows who you are. Quit faking for church folk that ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in and learn how to be real. Lord, here am I. Send me. I messed up, but send me anyhow. All I ask, Lord, is don't take your hand off of me. So he says, he says, I'm, I'm Jacob. He says, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? He says, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. Your name shall no longer be called Jacob because this time you didn't cheat to get this. You didn't lie to get this. You wasn't tricked to get this, but this time you did it the right way. This time you held on. I wish I had somebody. Y'all going to get this in a minute. This time you told God, I'm not going nowhere until you bless me. I'm not going to no more churches. I'm not running down to no more revivals. I'm going to stay right here in your presence until you deliver me, until you break free, until you do something in me that has not been done before. I've tried everything else, and I'm still at a point of saying, Lord, I'm empty. Unless you fill me up, I'm tired of being empty. So he says, your name shall be Israel. I'm changing your name. But I don't just want to just change your name because if I just change your name, you might only use your name when it benefits you. So let me give you something that will remind you of this night. Y'all, 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 y'all still with me? Let me give you something that will remind you of this night. Not what will remind you of your past, but will remind you of this night. And the word says he brought, took his hip out of socket and made it so it wouldn't go in so that Jacob walked with a limp. Why? Because he wanted Jacob to always remember today was the day that I got changed. This was the day that I was totally transparent with God, and God delivered me. And God says, I'm ready to do something in your life. Will you be transparent? Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but shall be Israel. Now, here's the good thing. Y'all ready for me? He did not send him to a different community. Stay here. He sent him back to the same place that he meant for evil. That's why the Bible can say what the enemy meant for evil. God will turn it around for your... See, y'all don't believe God at his word, and you don't understand that. Jacob had every intent to go back and trick Esau a second time, but this time God said, let me change you, but let me still send you to Esau changed. Let me, let me send you to the same place that you've been running game changed. Let me send you to the same friends that you've been kicking it with Change. Let me send you to the same family that's been crazy. Change. Let me send you to the same job that's been crazy. Change. Let me send you to the same neighborhood. Crazy. Change. Let me send you back different than you left. And the first thing we want to do is go somewhere where don't nobody know my name. Where my cheers crowd. Y'all remember that show Cheers? I want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you can. 
As long as we go there who we used to be, we don't mind that. But the moment God starts doing something different, we don't want to go back there because we're afraid they're going to judge us like we used to judge other folks. But the devil is a liar. God needs some transformed believers to go back to the same place you came out of to pull them out of the situation that they're in. Let me, let me, let me, I'm, 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 I'm. I'm, I'm done. I'm try, I've held it together. Let me, let me explain this to you. Listen, listen. You cannot send undercover spies to a community if they don't look like the folks of that community. Y'all, 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 y'all blew that. You got to send folk who can blend in to the folks if you understand how to get the information that you need. Let me help you out. God said, I brought you out and changed you so I can send you back in on a covert opportunity to grab those who are there and tell them there is a way out of no way. There is a bomb in Gilead. There is a way out of this. And if you Come with me. Uh, there's a savior uh, ready to save you. Reverend, you don't know, understand. I can't go back to them because, you know, um, um, you know, you know, you know, if I go back, you know, you know, you know, what if, you know, you know, church folks see me, you know, you know, if I go back, you know, and church people see me. You know, they gonna think that, you know, you know, that I ain't, I ain't saved, you know, you know, you know, but let me help you out, you know, you know, you know, only unsaved folk, you know, you know, judge other folk, you know, you know, if you're saved, you know, you know, and you've been washed in the blood of the crucified one, you know, you know, you know, you can't judge, you know, you know, because you know, judge not least he be judged by the same measure in which you judge. Is there anybody in here that understand you need grace, unmerited favor by God, and you need it every... You mean tell me, Reverend, God will bring me out of the crack house, deliver me, and send me back in the crack house? And the answer is yes. Because who better to witness to a crackhead uh, than a redeemed crackhead? Uh, Y'all miss it. Uh, I know you want to be churchy, uh, but is there anybody that can be real uh, that you know what it's like uh, to hit that pipe like they do? Uh, and when you tell them you found a high that never come down. This time, I'm working for it. This time, I got an assignment, and it's not just singing in the choir. You mean tell me God expects me to do more than just singing in the choir? Uh-huh. It ain't just being an usher. You mean tell me God expects me to do more than just usher? Uh-huh. It ain't just being a deacon. You expect God to do, yeah. uh-huh. All of us in here have an assignment to go back to the place God found us at. And quit lying talking about God found you at church. God found you where you were at. In your mess. Oh, tired of y'all good lying folk. God found me in the church. You lying. And if he did find you in the church, you were stealing in the church. Cheating in the church. Lying in the church. Jesus says himself. Those who are sick do not need a physician. So I did not come for well folk. I came for sick folk that I might heal them, that they might understand what the healing is all about. And so we got some, we got some Jacobs in the sanctuary. But you didn't lie. You didn't cheat it. And you didn't been tricked. And God sent me here to tell you, I'm through wrestling with you if you know the right words. Now, in Roman history, if you were a gladiator and you were on the sands, there was a sign that let the opponent know you gave up. 
we've turned it into scout's honor, but there really was a gladiator sign to let the other one know, unless it was a fight unto the death, you literally could tell the other gladiator, I'm done. I give up. In war, there is a sign that the white flag and your hands raised up is a universal sign that you give up. It's understood no matter where you're at. Well, in the church, the universal sign that you're ready to give up is to say to God, I will not let you go until you bless me. And then you throw your hands up and you let God know, I'm tired of doing it by myself. I'm tired of leading this by myself. I'm tired of being my own God, my own Lord, and my own Savior. I need El Shaddai. I need Elohim. I need the one that made a way out of no way to step in. And change things. God says, if you're through wrestling, just tell him, I'm not going to let you go, Lord, until you bless me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave your presence, Lord, until you bless me. Not this time, uh-uh. So many times I left too early. And some of y'all, let me help you out. Some of y'all left five minutes before you got delivered. Some of y'all deliverance was right there, but you left too early. Some of y'all gave up too soon. But as a believer, you got to understand that, Lord, I'm just going to hold on. If I can't do nothing else, I'm going to hold on to your foot until you get there. I will never forget kid messing around with my daddy once me and my brother were wrestling with him and we were younger and we were doing our thing and uh, he got the best of us but it was time to eat and my daddy like me loved to eat so Quincy and I figured something out I said Quincy you grab that leg and I'm going to grab this leg and we're going to win this fight. He grabbed that leg. I grabbed that leg. My dad said, boy, what y'all doing? We said, daddy, we're going to hold on until you get us where we want to go. He said, where y'all want to go? He said, we want to go in the kitchen because the food is done. And I'll never forget my dad. Instead of pushing us off, he started walking like this. And he carried us to where we will want to go. And when we got to the table, he said, y'all learned a lesson today. Huh? Because you were determined to get to where you wanted to go. Huh? The father in me would not let you stay huh, where you were. Huh? I had to carry you huh, where you asked me to get you to. Huh? I wish I had somebody huh, that will tell the father, huh, I'm tired of being tired. Huh? I'm sick of being sick. Huh? Lord, take me to your healing. I'm not going to let you go. Until you bless me. I'm tired of being who I've been. And wherever you at in the sanctuary today, this message was for you. There's some folk here who are real that you know what I'm talking about. You, you came here already wrestling. You came here already tired. You came here already, already depressed, already tired of being in that situation, but you made up your mind. If I see Jesus today, I'm going to grab Jesus today. I'm not going to come to church and leave here in the same situation that I came in. I'm not going to come here and be this close to God's glory and not get the glory for myself. I'm not going to let him pass by and not touch the hem of his garment. I'm not going to be this close. Not again. Not again. I might be 60, but I'm tired of being this way. I'm ready to do something different. I might be a teenager, but I'm ready to do something, do something different. As we stand all over the sanctuary, today is your day. Today is your day. Today is your, your day. I'm tired of being the way I am. 
It's hard to be in the way that I am. And listen, I need you to have this tunnel vision today. I need you to come down not worried about who's looking. Not worried about who's judging. Because whoever's going to judge, listen, they don't have a heaven or hell to put you in, but their judgment can send them to hell. So today is your day. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to do something different. I'm ready to do something new. I'm ready to leave who I used to be. I'm ready to leave who they said I am, who I, whatever I did. I know I lied. I know I cheated. I know I've been tricked, but I'm ready to do something, to do something different. I'm just, Lord, I trust you. I trust you, Lord. Wherever you at today is your day. Come on, come meet me. Meet me down here. Come meet me. Meet me down here. I'm going to ask the deacons to walk the aisle. We're going to we're going to walk with you. Today is your day. Don't, don't leave here. Don't leave here the same way. Today is, is your day. If that's something telling you, I need to come down. That's the Holy Spirit. Don't you, don't, don't, don't sit on the Holy Spirit, but come just as you are. Come just as you are. Come just, he already knows your story. He knows, he knows your background. He ain't worried about your background, baby. He's worried about your future. And he'll change you from the inside and out. Wherever you at, come on, come on, come on.